Right, uh, hello everyone and welcome to the JLR YouTube podcast and it's time for another episode of a Broken Sword 2 The Smoking Mirror Walkthrough and Review So, before we start playing, uh, same as usual, a quick review for everyone out there um, So, we're playing as George and Nico, the two heroes from the first game, Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars uh, by the way, if you don't want me to spoil that game for you, then I suggest you should stop watching this video and check out my uh, first uh, walkthrough and review uh, uh, YouTube shows that I did about Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Number. Anyways, <coughs> here goes. So, George and Nico, <coughs> excuse me, are heroes from uh, the first game, Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars, that, where they saved the world from the Neo-Templars, are back at it with, uh, uh, this time... Uh, um, uh, dealing with, I guess, yeah, Mayan, uh, Mayan gods. <laughs> well, what? Uh, uh, basically, one god, Tezcatlipoca, the, the god who is trapped in the smoking mirror. So, what happened so far? Um, George left uh, the country, came back after half a year. He had his dad, father was dying. Met with Nico. Nico wanted to see this man, Professor Upie, because he had this Mayan artifact that he wanted to um, show him. But what happened? Have a confused. Uh, she was uh, kidnapped. George was knocked out, and then, but uh, he was able to survive uh, an encounter with a spider and uh, a burning house. <clears throat> he escaped, uh, tracked down Lavino, uh, and uh, got information from him. More, uh, more information about him. Why uh, Nico wanted to see this Professor Rubier, and uh, who, by the way, wasn't there when we uh, when they went to his house. It said that uh, Pablo and Titipoco were there. Um, uh, what uh, Lopino said was uh, she had uh, gotten this stone, an uh, ancient Mayan stone that he actually had with him. So Nico didn't have it with her when she was kidnapped. And then we, later we found out that um, uh, this Professor Rubia was getting um, uh, his, his Mayan artifacts from... Um, a company called Cron Contour Trans Global, which was based with, uh, in Marseille. There's uh, at a dock in Marseille. That's where George went, and uh, eventually found Nico there, being uh, kept. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was, I guess, yeah, being held captive. But we were managed, managed to get her away from Pablo, <clears throat> and we also found out Titi Poco, the other small. Uh, Central American looking Mayan, most likely Mayan related uh, Central American native uh, <coughs> was being manacled as well, so he's maybe not not such a bad guy after all maybe <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, so so we got rid of Pablo and we saved Nico Nico told us more about why what she was doing she's trying to uncover this uh, well, she's working on a story trying to uncover this uh, shady business that Contour Translocal is like well, 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 what she thought first was that this General Karsak was uh, trying to deal narcotics to the country. And uh, they had that, like, hidden under the uh, this Contour Transglobal Mayan artifact expo export. But, um, <clears throat> uh, but uh, what she received when she thought she was going to get uh, evidence, you know, narcotic evidence, she re received that stone. And they don't really, they didn't really know much about that stone then, but what they later found out after, you know, going to Cuaramante City, where the company was located, but wasn't there anymore, and <clears throat> finding out that, you know, Professor Rubia was there with the, in, in cahoots with the general, trying to find, uh, trying to get the mine that was near Cuaramante City to, in Tel what was the name, I forgot, and getting that mine shut down so they could do some, some weird activity there around the eclipse, so, and, um, yeah, then George being chased off. Um, what the hell happened now? Why did I just leave the game? Awkward! Never mind. Is it because I was inactive or something? Maybe might have been. Maybe my, I'm just rambling with this review. Anyways, so what would, uh, <clears throat> what we know is that, um, yeah, uh, George and Nico uh, were sought out by the general. They were, Fled on a boat with a musician named Miguel after being uh, uh, es after Dwayne Henderson helped them escape the American from the first game, and uh, what yeah what ensues was like the boat was you know the came there was a chopper 
threw a bomb in the boat. The bomb explode. The bo The boat exploded, and um, George survived, and Nigo as well. But she was bitten by a poisonous snake, so George had to go to a local villager. Um, and the uh, the shaman in that village, <clears throat> we uh, recognized the stone, the mine, the coyote stone, as one of the three obs uh, obsidian black stones that um, are the protection, like these protector stones that uh, would keep Tezcatlipoca with inside the smoky mirror. But if they are not really relocated inside this uh, uh, large pyramid. Uh, then uh, Tezcatlipoca will be will be freed freed out of the mirror, I suppose, before the beginning of the, the end of the fifth age. Not beginning, end of the fifth age. Over the beginning of the fifth age. I forgot. Anyway, at the uh, uh, the total eclipse, that's when he uh, he has a chance to get out of the smoking mirror. But if those stones are recovered and put back into their place, then we can save the day. So, anyways. George and Nico had to split. George went after the Eagle Stone that was uh, stolen by uh, a pirate called Captain Katz. And uh, <clears throat> Nico went uh, to London to try to find more about the Jaguar Stone that was captured by the English privateer Sir Francis Drake. Um, what happened was uh, there's so much havoc. So George found out that in the Caribbean that this Captain Katz had an island called Zombie Island not far from where he lived. And uh, uh, gathering the clues that we had at the museum, <clears throat> we found out, yeah, that's probably where his where his treasure was stored. And he told, uh, 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 the passage was, uh, for isn't it easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle? And then we found out on that island, oh, by the way, Emily helped us give us the cross. By the way, she was dead. It was a ghost, the way that she moved, and then the way Rio said, the last time she hit. So, yeah, that was kind of a uh, freaky thing there. But, yeah, what happened was that we found out, okay, there is a pin rock, and it seems to be pointing towards the, 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 the camel hump, which was like this mountain that we climbed up. And uh, using uh, Bronson Theodolite, the guy who tried to swindle on the um, um, the old ladies that uh, were behind the uh, uh, Captain Katz's museum, um, uh, uh, we were able to pinpoint the, the needle rock, and then that in a straight line there was a huge uh, rock that had a hole in it. That must have been where. Well, that must be where uh, Captain Katz has, had, yeah, had uh, hit his treasure in that hole. So George found that out, went down <coughs> the mountain. In the meantime, Nico has been trying to cap, uh, go after Professor Ubia because he stole the Jaguar stone while he was in the uh, British Museum with her. And uh, she was able to escape and went to this abandoned... Uh, uh, train station. By the way, another ghost there. It was the ghost of Khan when he was dressed up as an old lady in the first Broken Sword game. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and that was a really funny easter egg when we went into another game. But anyways, um, she's, uh, she was finally able to get to the dock to the boat, uh, to the ship that uh, he was going to go to. Um, uh, Professor Ruby. We found that out uh, at the British Museum. So... Without further ado, let's continue as Nico Collar, Restore. And here we are. We need to get to this boat here, or ship. It's probably a ship. It's not a big ship. Is it a boat or is it a ship? It's maybe a small ship, but that's Pablo, by the way. We figured that out, right? Pablo, Kazakh's pet sadist. The one who kidnapped Nico. And then there's a guard walking around the A guard ship. patrolled the deck. He was <clears> sure <throat> to be armed. All right, so we have to be very careful. There's it a was risky, but I thought I could get to the next crate unseen. All right, but well, we should probably do that first. But let's let him pass us by. Mm -hmm. Now, the guy was talking to Pablo there. So, maybe when he does that, we should try to get to 
this ladder be? Can we look at it? A ladder gave access to the cabin's roof. We could go to the cabin's roof. Let's see if we... Well, let's see if he passes us. Okay, he's still walking around. The... Maybe it's better to be safe than sorry to... I mean... Would we... It's probably... Probably not gonna make it. Let me see. Now, I don't want to take the risk. I mean, I could show you what happens and just die. I've, I've done that before. Actually, we'll just reload again. <laughs> now, uh, let's uh, let's see. Let's do it the right way. Show you how it's done. He's talking to the guy now, right? Okay. Go up. Real. This is now we're definitely safe because he took his time talking to Pablo, which means we can now lay up there. But now we're much closer it to the It looked like the door to some sort of utility locker. Utility Metal locker. hooks had been welded onto each side of the door frame. Okay, then what's this? A here? mop for swabbing the deck stood against the wall. It was a porthole to the main cabin. So. Shall we wait for him to talk to Pablo again and see if we can access this cupboard? We're probably not going to get to the door. It's too close to where Pablo is and that guy. Walks around again. We'll have to just take our sweet time. Waiting and waiting. I'm guessing Professor Rubio is on that, uh, on that ship, but... Would Carsack be there as well? Most likely if Pablo's there. to Pablo. That's our chance to open this door. There's something inside? Not really? Let's just go up the ladder. He's bound to notice this. What will he do then? I'm guessing he will try to walk in. And when that happens, Nico, you make sure he's locked up. Go, 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 go. And just to make sure he will not escape, use the mop to lock that door up. I'm stuck in the car park. See, that's how you do it. Tell us safe just in case. Yeah, fine. Because I. We could kill ourselves. So if you mess that up, I mean, I could have shown you that Nico would just get herself killed if we didn't wait for the right opportunity to catch him. So we could, like I said, no, the option for the door just disappear. We can't, we can't even go to it. So there's, the only option is the portal. It was a porthole to the... I know. Let's look through. What's going to happen now? But the collar woman was there. They'll know it was me. But you have the stone. The right stone, you're sure? Yes, of course, it's the Jaguar stone. No possible mistake. Here it is. It's still the stone for Karzak. Karzak, please. The police will be looking for me soon. You're going to get me out of the country, aren't you? Stop your whining, Ubier. Do you have any idea what this stone symbolizes? I thought you just wanted it to frighten the natives. Fool. I intend to cast this stone into the sea. But why? It's unique. Exactly. With it gone, the Mayan priest's plan to destroy Tezcatlipoca cannot succeed. I can assure you that Tezcatlipoca is a mythical figure. Such a small mind you live in. Tezcatlipoca is real. I have seen him in my dreams. We have spoken of his plans for this world. We have spoken of your part in these plans. My part? He told me you would be useful. He told me how to crush your spirit by turning you to drugs. My wife died. You know that full well. She was my world, my everything. And now? You are no longer useful. She called out your name as she died, you know. What? What are you saying? And then they thought you'd done it. It all worked perfectly. You? It was you? 
You bastard! You monster! For the love of God, Kazak! Which one? Which one? Psychotic bastard killed Ubi. And he was the one who killed his wife! And he believes in Tezcatli Bulga and he wants him freed. He was going to throw the stone out to the sea. Luckily, we get to the stone before he is the guest. It's a Jaguar stone. It was the Jaguar stone that Ubiye had stolen from the museum. It was identical in size and shape to the Coyote stone. And what are we waiting for? A stylized for? carving of a Jaguar decorated one side. What about Ubiye? Ubiye lay sprawled across the table. Poor Ubiye. I couldn't pawn. just rifle his body without making sure he was really dead. Oh, okay. Let's make sure he's dead. There were no signs of life, but I checked that Ubiye really was beyond help. He's afraid of taking we the We were going to need the stone to thwart Karzak. I knew Ubiye would have approved. Yeah. Especially known at the, at the very end. It was, it was the Jaguar stone, all right. All right, nice animation there. We have it. <gasps> Son of a bitch! Carson is trying to strangle Nico. What are you going to do? Uh, my sight had become tunnel vision. I knew I was dying. We're dying. Let's stab the motherfucker. Get that dagger. It's going to work. I know. Right in the leg. Nicely done, Nico. Run away. Run away. Oh, the guy broke out of the cupboard, and Pablo, they took our guns, shot, and we're now all of a sudden pirates. pirates. George is surrounded by pirates at a fort. What the hell is going on? I was about to on? make good my escape when... Cut! Cut? Who the hell are you? Uh, I can explain everything. <laughs> Don't bother. Who the hell are you? Let's look around. Ah, we have, it seems, I'm a sorry. movie going I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were making a movie. So who are you? Stobart, George Stobart. Uh, two B's and two T's. It's okay, <laughs> Mr. Hawks, he wasn't in the shot. Hawks? This had to be Carlton Hawks, the newest enfant terrible of Tinseltown. I'd read about him. Mailroom boy makes good. Nice to know it was still possible to get to be a director armed with only an encyclopedic knowledge of postal charges. Stay out of the way, surfer boy. I'll deal with you later. Surfer boy? Surfer boy. He thinks George is a surfer boy. Right, anyways. Um, that was uh, interesting. So what? So many things happened now. George was a, uh, Nico was able to escape with the Jaguar stone from Pablo and the other guys were shooting at her. So I'm guessing she is okay. But now we're here as George... We want to get to that rock with the hole in it, but, like, we're now at this movie set. And this director here... The great director. Well, that's what his pose was supposed to say. He reminded me of Ed Wood. <laughs> Let's just apologize to Mr. Hawks here. Like, sorry, we didn't want to ruin this. What's the name of the movie? Are you trying to be funny? No. It's Treasure Island, the only book I ever read twice. Treasure Island? Makes sense. I don't recall any girls in Treasure Island. Gotta think box office. People like that kind of thing. Oh. So you need a girl? Who is the girl? Who's the leading lady? Don't you recognize her? That's Sharon Kowalski. Oh, right. I'd never heard of her. Me neither. <laughs> Let's ask more about the uh, movie. What other changes have you made to the story? Just a few minor details. You mm. haven't written out Long John Silver. Are you questioning my integrity as an artist? Of course Silver's still in it. We've even hung on to Captain Flint. His mm. parrot. Mm -hmm. His trained attack falcon. Why do you think Blind Pew's blind? <laughs> well, now the parrot is a falcon, okay? Did you say you've changed the ending of the story? That's right. Do they find the treasure? Yeah, but that comes later. After they've escaped the volcanic eruption. A volcano? Sure. Krakatoa. All the millions <laughs> spent on a movie, and nobody thinks to buy an atlas. Yeah, Krakatoa isn't really in the Caribbean. <laughs> Who's playing Jim Hawkins? Haiku McEwen. Oh, don't tell me you've never heard of him. I don't go to the movies too often. Jeez. Yeah. Haiku is only the hottest teen star in Hollywood. That's why we're on such a tight schedule. 
Gotta film the close-ups before he hits puberty. <laughs> that young. Okay. You know what the locals call this place, don't you? Zombie no, Island. but I guess you're gonna tell me. Zombie Island. Zombies? A crazed gleam came into his eye. <laughs> Get me the writers. Get me makeup. I want zombie pirates in this movie by the end of today. Ugh. Like Pirates of the Caribbean? <laughs> Alright, so we've had our chat with that man. There's a man here behind a it camera. It was a camera. Mounted on a precarious dolly, or whatever they call him. Okay. So we talked to the man... You wouldn't get me up there. Handling the camera? It was the cameraman. Hey, cameraman. Hi, I'm George Stobart. My name's Harris. Most people call me Flash. You're the cameraman, right? That's right. Why'd they call you Flash? You used to be a stills photographer? Nope. I decided not to pursue the subject. <laughs> there was nothing else I wanted to ask the cameraman. No, we have actually nothing to ask him about. Then there's a man over here... He was a middle-aged man with a pockmarked face. Hmm. What on earth could that be one of the... other characters? Hi, George like... Stobart. Hello, Sorry. mate. You're English, right? Blimey, you don't miss much, do you? <laughs> Bert Savage. Have you seen what the caterers laid on today? Buns and pancakes. That's hmm. awful. It's an improvement on yesterday. The buns are stale, but the pancakes are bloody lovely. Bloody lovely. So who is he? How long have you been in the movie business? Flipping years, mate. Absolutely flipping years. I was in the army before that. Mm. Thought to myself, you've been risking your bleeding neck every day. Why not cash in on it like? So you became a stuntman, just like that? Nah, of course not. I had to do the training first. Had to do the training first. All right. Uh, let's imagine. What more. training does a stuntman do? First, they told me to stand in the road. Then they run me down, straight up. Drove at me with a car. I couldn't believe it. I was up on the bonnet and over the other side before I realised he wasn't stopping. Then they threw me downstairs a bit and gives me a certificate. Downstairs. <laughs> they even spell it the way he's saying it phonetically. Oh, they ask about the stone. Show him the stone. Have you ever seen anything like this before? What's that, mate? Stone axe? No, it's just a piece of polished stone. Very nice, very nice indeed. Shine it up a bit, you get a few bob for that. <laughs> He's very English. All right. We can ask him about Professor Ubier, who's dead, by the way. George doesn't know. Did you ever meet Bertrand Ubier? Meet him? No. I saw him a few times, though. He didn't like his wife being in films. Oh. Ask more about his wife. Did you ever work with Carol Climax? The dirty dashend? I'll say. Flipping princess, mate. I heard she was very beautiful. Mind you, she acted like one too. Ordering this, demanding that. Uh, let's more ask more about Ubie. Do you think Ubie murdered his wife? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Mind you, there were plenty of people who could have done her in. I thought the public loved her. Yeah, but people who knew her saw the other side. Well, it doesn't matter. We know it was Karsak. He just told us. <laughs> I see. He was talking about buns and pancakes. So look at the buns. It was a plate of buns. All right. Let's get some buns out of here. And what the else? The bun do we was have? so stale it felt like a small rock. Small rock. All right. What about the pancakes? It was a pile of pancakes which were being devoured by Bert. He <laughs> couldn't get enough of them. Wow. He really likes pancakes. Well, who doesn't? I love pancakes. What do we have here? Syrup? There was a pot of delicious looking maple syrup on the table. Let's get some syrup. We're just ransacking this. <laughs> Here's the forest. It looked uh, even worse than the ones I'd just been through. So we would not be able I to go... I need a damn good reason before I go into those woods. We're not gonna go by ourselves in that in those forests. Probably not gonna find our way out. So we might need their help to get to the rock. I'd seen a lot of strange things on this island, but here was a bush that was buzzing. Bushing, buzzing, buzzing bush. I almost, I, I almost want to do the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, when you, a Freudian slip, mix things up, or, yeah, I was going to say buzzing buzz, <laughs> but it's buzzing bush. All right, let's look at, get closer to As it. As I walked towards the bush, it started buzzing angrily. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do another 
really bad impersonation of and especially not George Bus. Jesus. How would he uh, angrily but <laughs> <laughs> Alright Sharon, who is Sharon? Is the famous movie star Sharon somebody or other. <laughs> Let's talk to Sharon somebody. Hey there, I'm George Stobart. Well, hi, handsome. You're cute. Ooh. I wish it was you playing the lead male instead of that kid. I can't act, ma'am. So what? I bet you can kiss. I couldn't believe I was having this conversation with a real movie star. Nice. Let's ask her. talk to her a little bit more. What part are you playing? Pirate Babs, the ruthless and passionate lady buccaneer. It's a great part. I get to kiss a lot, and I kick ass. Like the boots? <laughs> so we'll give her the panties? Since Nico doesn't want them? <laughs> what do you think of these? Ew, they're awful. You have no idea how much you've just gone up in my estimation. Actually, that's true. It's one of Lobino's crazy ideas. To give Nico those panties. Alright. So we ask, has she seen a stone like the Mayan stone? Take a look at this ancient Mayan artifact. That's just a hunk of stone with a picture scratched on it. In a way, I guess. You don't happen to have seen anything similar, have you? No. No. All right. I'll ask her more about the movie. What do you think of Hawk's treatment of Treasure Island? It's okay, I guess. I never saw the original. It's a book. One of my favorites. Really? The novelization's out already? <laughs> it was first the novel. But there have been many, I think there have been many renditions. Well, even the Muppets did a version of it. Uh, let's see, does she want a bun? Would you like this bun? All right. Oh, wait a minute. Hawks is watching me. Don't let him see it. Oh, he's looking right at me. What's the matter? Never mind. Just put that cake away and pretend you weren't talking to me. Uh, strict diet? <laughs> Hollywood. This is 90s Hollywood, so things are... Weinstein is on the loose. <laughs> Let's ask about the uh, the kid. What's it like sharing the spotlight with an actor who's young enough to be your son? What do you mean? She probably doesn't take kindly to being... Well, oh, no, never mind. Okay. Uh, the reeds. I found this reed in the swamp on the other side of the island. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I used it to shoot a poison dart at a wild boar. It was a real-life drama, not just a scene from a movie. Right. She was having trouble with the whole real-life-is-not-a-movie concept. <laughs> not getting much out of her, though. I do wonder how old she is compared to this guy. He was suggesting that he, she might be, what, what, like 20 years older than him? Not a nice compliment, or... <laughs> It was boy. teen idol Haiku McEwen in his first starring role. Like, uh, uh, Cam uh what was his name? Um, oh my god. Hi there, George Stobart. Uh huh. Ugh. Yeah. Keanu Reeves, Haiku sorry. McEwen. You're playing Jim Hawkins, right? Jimbo. I had Mr. Hawks change his name. Jimbo Hawkins, <laughs> right. So it's Jimbo Hawkins. So we ask him about uh, himself. Is your name really Haiku? Yeah. It was my mom's idea, okay? When I was born, I was so small and perfectly formed, I reminded her of a Japanese poem. Well, I guess it could have been worse. She could have called you Limerick. That's my middle name. Haik Haiku Limerick. <laughs> what kind of a name is that? Did you always want to be an actor? I don't think of what I do as acting, man. You're not alone. <laughs> it's more like I'm the voice of my generation. What I'm saying, I'm saying for the kids on the street. Which is what? I'm crap, I'm going nowhere? Huh? What are you saying, man? George is brutal in his honesty sometimes. All right. Stobart, get out of shot. Positions, everybody. Oh, I'll get a, a flip chart and explain it to you later, Haiku. Jesus Christ. Haiku, baby, are you ready? Okay, man. Uh, which scene is this? You've been captured by Silver's accomplice, Pirate Babs, who's fallen in love with you. That whirring sound you can hear? 
It's Robert Louis Stevenson spinning in his grave. <laughs> okay, people. Top of page 76, Sharon. What about my big speech? It's been cut. Everybody ready? Up to speed. And here we go. Quiet on the set. Okay, let's make magic. Action. Oh, please. <laughs> and action! Why don't you forget that dumb old squire and his bunch of merry men? Can't you see we were made for each other? I know, but Squire Trelawney saved my life, Captain Babs. Why, if it hadn't have been for him, that giant octopus would have made mincemeat out of me. But right now he thinks you're a traitor. He's locked you out of the stockade, Jimbo. That 20-foot high wall with spikes might have kept out Silver's men, but it ain't gonna stop me. Oh, Jimbo. And cut! Not Good really heavy a breathing, sexy Sharon. Scene. Natch, I'm a pro. Yeah. Did you get the heavy breathing flash? Did I ever, boss? You should have made this movie in 3D. Hey. Haiku, you were great. We're setting up for the stunt now, so get a bite to eat. Oh. Well, there goes Haiku. And I'm guessing then they're gonna get the stuntman? Savage! On set, damn it! Savage! Oh, savage! Come on, name is it. Here comes the Savage. Okay. Oh, they've uh, now made him go up there. Alright, never mind. Um, we can, con can we continue our conversation with Haiku? Hey! Haiku. Yeah, man. Does you want a bun? Would you like a bun? No way, man. I have to be careful what I eat. Yeah. Uh, Never eat anything smarter than yourself. George is added with his haiku guy. Maybe it's jealousy, but he's... <laughs> what about the coal? I may not be making millions of dollars, and I may not have thousands of nubile, if uncritical, young women lusting for my body, but... I've got something that you haven't. This small piece of coal. Man, you're getting freaky on me. <laughs> Are you scaring the poor kid? All right. Is there anything else we can do around here except these five people we can't really... There's the stockade, but... More Davy Crockett than Long John Silver. <laughs> I didn't think Hawks would want me roaming about in the stockade. Probably not. All the cr the uh, the other pirate crew that was here during the shooting is gone, on a break or something, or maybe they're inside. I have no idea. But so here's the forest. It was right? the forest I'd just come through. We're, so we're, I could think of about back. thirty thousand reasons for not going back in there, and all of them had wings. Okay, so we're not obviously going back, but the way out. This way seems to be too hard as well. We might need their help. Right? Because th then there's this forest here. It looked even worse than the ones I'd just been through. Looks worse. Uh, so, we're probably going to need Hawk's help to just... Yeah. Could you help us get to this rock on the beach? Let's see what he says. Mr. Hawks, I was wondering if... Not now. I got a movie to make. Okay, sorry. Gonna make another Time for scene. the stunt, Savage. It's a short run, bounce on the plank, and somersault over the spikes and stockade wall. Do what? Plank, spikes, wall, over. Easy, a child could do it. At my age, you must be joking. I could replace you, Savage. Yeah, with an arthritic baboon. Replace me? Nummy. This could be the last stunt I ever perform. I need to think about this. Get myself in the right frame of mind. A suicidal one would fit the bill <laughs> for that stunt. Fine. You do that. In the meantime, we'll break for lunch. Oh, great. I'm famished. Stay right there and meditate, Savage. <laughs> Tight arse little git. Tight arse little git. He's not allowed to have more pancakes. Uh, sad. That's sad. 
birds. I wish I could give you more pancakes. We can not uh, ask him about the bush, by the way. I don't want to worry you, but there's a hornet's nest over in that bush. Hornets. That reminds me of a film I was in. Mm -hmm. The Black Hornet. Can we ask more about the hornets? The Black Hornet? I don't remember seeing that one. Before yeah. your time, most likely. What happens in it? Lummy, what don't happen in it? I was shot, stabbed, fed to piranhas, <laughs> dangled from an airship, and trampled by a zebra. No, I mean, what was the plot? Plot? <laughs> plot? <laughs> Movies back in the day. They didn't really know plot, I suppose. Um, does he want a bun? Would you like a bun? No way. The last one I tried cracked my dentures. Dentures? <laughs> You need to have the dentures. <laughs> what about, um, syrup? Would you like this pot of syrup? No thanks, mate. I don't like the stuff. No. Oh. Doesn't like syrup. Does it like pancakes? Would you like a pancake, Bert? Don't mind if I do. Oh. We gave him a pancake and he seems to be happy with it. Alright. Does that mean we can take another pancake and give it to him? We could. Yeah. We just took another pancake. It was a plain pancake. It is plain, so why not put some syrup on it? But he doesn't like syrup. Well, I mean... He's gotta try. Have you, has he even tried the syrup? I mean... It was a pancake covered in maple syrup. Let's just see if he would like some... Like a pancake with some maple syrup. Oh, we have the option. Another pancake, Bert? Yeah, go on. Ah, he really likes his pancake. The pancake oozed maple syrup all over Bert's chins. Yeah, you put bloody syrup on that pancake. Now it's messed me all up. Uh, he'll, pro he'll probably not take another pancake from us. Maple syrup had dribbled down Bert's face and shirt. Hmm. Sir, could it be there was a hornet's nest somewhere in that bush? That those hornets will go for his syrup. Whoa! Now I knew why that bush was buzzing. Hornets. George took a nice look at the hornet. What if we just throw the piece of coal into the bush? No. We would throw this statue into the bush. No. We would throw a bun into the bush. Those hornets were not pleased. Not pleased at all. We'll take another bun. Let's take another bun and throw another bun into the bush. What happens then? Oh, the horn is our way! Get that camera rolling. This could be good. Oh my god! And they're going after Bert because of his syrup! Cut and printed! That was brilliant, folks! She passed out <laughs> the actress. Okay, the next scene is down on the beach. Oh. This is where Hawkins finds the treasure in the Cave of the Crabs. Would those be giant killer crabs by any chance? Giant mutant killer crabs with attitude. Like the ones in Fallout? We're going to the beach? Nice. There it was. The rock I'd seen from the camel's hump. Now that I was close up, I could make out a small cave near the top of the pillar. Well, that's where we're heading. Let's head out there. Hey, you! Trouble! Huh? Who? Oh, me? Why is he yelling at us? What the hell did we do? Except for giving him the... I want you to thing. stay right where I can keep an eye on you. I'm not one of your lackeys, Hawks. I go where I like. Not here you don't. The movie company has rented this island for the duration. You're trespassing. Do as you're told or you're gone. 
Damn it. Let's look at Hawks here. It was Carlton Hawks, the megalomaniac director. That megalomaniac won't let us go to the pillar? There it was. The column of rock I'd seen from the camel's hump. It was a lot taller than I'd expected. <laughs> You're gonna have to climb it, right? So what's the deal, man? Why can't we climb that rock? Why don't you use that cave up on the rock pillar at the end of the beach? We don't have a stuntman anymore. Hey, I'll do the stunt. I appreciate the offer, but if you fall, you'll sue us. No, I won't. Everybody hear that? I heard it. Good enough, mm -hmm. we're covered. Got any experience? Death-defying leaps, desperate fist fights, getting caught in explosions, you name it. Okay, people, move out. We're shooting the scene at the end of the beach. No, we're not. The camera's still bogged down. Ah. Uh. Shoot, I forgot about that. No go, Stobart. We'll have to use this cave after all. This cave? What? Uh, so we ask more. What about the stuntman? What he won't go do it? Anymore? I was talking to Mr. Savage, the stuntman. Is he all right? What makes you say that? He's not making any sense. The guy's English. <laughs> all right. What about the movie? You don't look happy. Why should I be happy? Look at that cave. It's supposed to be where the treasure is. So? Look at it! It's crap! Does that look like the sort of place anybody would hide treasure? I should have had props build me a proper damn cave. A cinematic cave. What do you mean, a cinematic cave? One with drama. Danger. One that looks like the mouth of a big stone skull would be cool. But I'd settle for drama and danger. Well, the cave over there would be... Uh, the, the cave that we want to go to would be great, but... The little tent was like a canvas outhouse. Uh, look at the tent here. Oh. Hey, surfer boy, stay out of there. Oh, what is it this time? That's the wardrobe tent. You've got no business to be going in there. Looked like I wasn't going to get to play dress up. Damn it. So we're not allowed to leave the man. We're not allowed to go to this cave. The cave mouth was huge. It looked like an obvious place to hide treasure, and that was probably why it wasn't the one Ketch had chosen. We're not going into that cave, right? He's probably going to tell us. Don't no go point in there. going there. It wasn't the cave I'd seen from the camel's hump. Yep. We need to go to the cave on the beach in that large rock. Pillar rock. Mm. What's wrong with the camera? The truck carrying the camera had sunk into the wet sand. Can we not move it? That ah. camera wasn't going anywhere. Not going anywhere. What is this handheld? It camera? was a portable movie camera. Could we pick that up? Flash? Oh? Yep. We can't film at the Needle Rock because the camera's bogged down, right? You got it, champ. So, why can't we use the portable camera instead? You know, that's a pretty smart idea. He's the first one to think of it? With all these uh, so-called professional movie makers? Jesus. You want to ask, ask more about the camera? Or we can ask about the, act, uh, the director. Mr. <laughs> Hawks doesn't like that cave. He says it isn't cinematic enough. Well, that's just too tough. The camera's bogged down in the sand. If he wants the shot done today, it'll have to be that cave. What about There's the other a one? pretty good cave over on the other side of the bay. The one up in that finger of rock? We'd need a stuntman. You got a stuntman. We ain't got no stuntman. Bird injured his back doing that dumb wall jump. Hmm. What, about what do the you other? think of Haiku McEwen? What's to think? The kid will have earned more by the time his balls drop than I'll earn in a lifetime. Good <laughs> luck to him. I'm just being honest. God damn. Poor old Bert looked in a bad way. Wasn't a surprise, considering what I'd put him through at the stockade. Is he mad at us if we talk to Bert? Will he be mad at us? Let's find out. Hi, Bert. Don't you eye me. Fine friend you turned out to be. <laughs> what's the problem? <laughs> Sorry. Let's ask him. Look, Bert, what's wrong? You got a bloody nerve. If I didn't know better, I'd have thought you gave me that pancake just so them hornets would go for me. Oh, Bert. You've wounded me. <laughs> How can you think that? 
Well, by looking at the evidence. <laughs> I don't know why you still want to be a stunt man anyway. Well, this is all I know, isn't it? If I don't do this, what do I do? Well, how about being a stunt coordinator? Being a what? You stand around in a big jacket and a baseball cap, telling the stunt people what to do. I can do that. Hey, you've done the job for years and you're not dead. That's got to be good for morale. Well, I don't know. You get your own megaphone. I'll do it. <laughs> George Stobart, international adventurer and roaming careers advisor. Wow. Well done, George. Can we ask about the cave? I've had a great idea. How about you dress up as Jim Hawkins and climb up to that cave over there? What cave? That cave? You must think I'm balmy. I did balmy. me back in being chased by them hornets over that flaming stockade wall. No way am I going up there. Well, that narrowed the field. <laughs> it's quite the accent. Co Cockney accent? It has to be, right? Let's ask about the diary. What's it like to work with Carlton Hawk? Flipping misery, mate. <laughs> Flipping misery. And what, what about the films? What films have you worked on in the past? Remember Death Stalker of the 10th grade? The psychotic biker what crashed into the school bus? That was me. <laughs> or what about They Prayed to Satan? I was the bloke in the hospital scene. You know, the one who caught fire, fell through the flipping skylight. I don't think I caught those. Any other? Must be cool getting to travel the world like this. Crazy yeah. films. Nice here, isn't it? My barrel used to love the seaside. Day out of Clacton. Bloody smashing. A pint of jelly deals washed down with a bottle of brown. Quick feel on a big wheel and a stroll around the town. Course them days, <laughs> you could live like a flipping king on ten bob a night. Tom Bowler, frothy coffee at the calf of the prom. You know, I don't have the <laughs> faintest idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I know what Tom Bowler is, but <laughs> I can get, I get it. What George got lost there. And it was Haiku McEwen, marketing's answer to talent. When you said tag. Kind of sounds like the guy, people in Boston. Yeah. Ask Haiku more. Hey, Haiku. Haiku. Is he ignoring us? Or? Yeah, man. There was nothing else I wanted to ask him. Oh, it's not even an option. Well, shall we mention uh, the camera to Hawks? I think that's the only option. We have to do the stunt and then get that uh, portable ha uh, handheld camera. I've been talking to the cameraman. He's got a portable camera. Portable. So, so you can use the cave in that rock pillar at the end of the beach. That's a dramatic cave if ever I saw one. He did mention it before. We ain't got a stabilized harness for it. The camera will wobble. Did D.W. Griffiths have a stabilized harness when he made Birth of a Nation? You're right, damn it. Hitchcock, Wells, none of them needed one. For crying out loud, Sam Raimi stabilized his camera on a plank. Props, mm -hmm. give me a plank. We're gonna wing it. Hot dog. We're gonna do a cinema verite pirate movie. George, get to wardrobe. We're gonna make you a star. On my <laughs> way. But now George is allowed to go to the tent to dress up as Jimbo Hawkins and do this stunt. That means George will be able to climb up into the cave. Ready wow. when you are, Mr. Hawks. With the sunglasses? Will not that ruin the shot? You're probably have to, gonna have to take them off. Never mind. And there George goes off. And he's climbing. It's very dangerous. There's a rock. There's a chest. George is breaking up the chest open. It was the stone which captured, then... captured from the Spanish. The Eagle Stone. It is the Eagle Stone we have. I returned to Guaramonte and found that George had left a message with Conchita. He'd already left for the Indian village, so I hurried to catch up with him. When I arrived, I found a scene of desolation. Scene of desolation. So Nico's back, but George had already had on to the village. She t told Consida that at the mining company. And now here comes Nico. The village has been burned. There were a pair of underpants just laying there. 
What the hell? Those are... These sunglasses are Georges. <gasps> oh no. What has happened? George, where are you? Titi Poco? The guy who... Titi Poco, I'm almost glad to see you. Are you? It did shoot you with the dark. With that dog gun. <gasps> Here's a gun. <laughs> it's a lighter. <laughs> Nasty you trick. little asshole. <laughs> what happened here? Are you responsible for this? Uh, and where's Georges? Have you seen him? Uh uh. He was pointing to the remains of a burned out hut. Pointing to the remains of a burned out hut? There's a Mayan stone. What stone is it? It was a very hot and blackened stone. Can we pick it, it up? It was too hot to pick up. Too hot to pick up. We need to maybe cool it down in some way. What's in this here barrel here? The water could have cooled the stone if I could figure out a way of getting it into the barrel. Into the barrel? Okay. Can we do something with the barrel? Uh, too heavy? I just didn't have the strength to tip that barrel. We don't have the strength to tip the barrel. What about... Let's see. There's a it was a right smashed there. lantern. Probably the cause of this destruction. Can we pick up the under underpants? The, the underwear that's laying there? Let's see. Underpants. Pick it up! Let me see. One thing I was sure of, those underpants weren't George's. <laughs> no mistake. Who would just leave Maybe them Maybe George can make use of these. <laughs> With the weird expression on her face, he picked up the underpants. I'm not sure if we even need them. But I think, well, we couldn't really pick up the stone with the... Underpants, could we? The underpants weren't thick enough to protect my hands. No, they're not thick enough. But we need to put the barrel over whatever this is here. I'm guessing it's one of the... Might be the Mayan stone. Or the Eagle stone. Let's talk to Titipoco. It was Titipoco. I still hadn't forgiven him for knocking me out with his poison dart. <laughs> Although he was manacled by Pablo, so he was. Let's uh, show him uh, sunglasses of yours. These are George's shades, right? Shades? Has he been here? Jaws! Jaws! He's like Emily. <laughs> what is he showing? What's that? What's that? It looks like the stone we bought from Paris, but it's different. Yes! It has a carving of an eagle. <gasps> that clinches it. Georges must have found this stone in the Caribbean and managed to hide the stone when the village was attacked by Karzak's men. I uh, hope to God that Georges was all right. Damn it. Let's ask more about Georges. Where's Georges? Georges has been here, right? Just keeps pointing. He was pointing to the smoldering remains of a hut. All right, then help us with the barrel. Then. Hey, Shorty. Make yourself useful and help me with this barrel. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. What is it? Let's look at the stone now. It was the Coyote stone. <gasps> the original stone that I found in Paris. And we have all the three stones. If you pick up the Maya, the Coyote Stone, and then you have the Jaguar Stone, and Titi Poco I has... I had the Coyote and Jaguar Stones. Exactly. Titi Poco had the Eagle, according to the Shaman. That's all we needed to deal with Tezcatlipoca. Pity he hadn't any true. ideas for dealing with Karzak. Here comes Titi Poco. Titi Poco? Titi Poco, sorry. Huh? Where is he pointing now? What is it? Where are you pointing? We point it into this direction here. Uh, it's an exit? Well, let's take the exit then. 
Let's head for the exit. We're leaving the village then. And Titipoko is coming with us. Well, we have the stones. We arrived to find Georges being led up the stairs. We clearly didn't have much time. So we arrived at the pyramid and he was being led up the stairs by the general and uh, Pablo. All right. So here we are at the pyramid. Folks, I am going to save here. Because this is going to be the end of episode 7. And uh, to do the double save here. So we... Possibly this could be over after the next episode. The way things are heading. This might be... Yeah. This is the second to last episode, most likely. Well, it depends on how long I want to play the next episode. But I, I think we're getting very close to the end. I mean, George being escorted to the uh, top of the uh, pyramid... With the General and Pablo, we have the three stones ready to stop General Kazak and Tezcatlipoca. But we just need to get up to the pyramids in some way. And that's where we ended. Nico, it's time for you to save yours. Save again. And it's also time to... Well, next time it will be time to make sure we take care of Karsak, Pablo... See how that goes. This hair, string of hair is bothering me. <laughs> All right, so I'll end it here. So that uh, that has been the, uh, what was it, the seventh episode? Yeah, seventh episode of Broken Swords 2, the smoking mirror walkthrough and review. And tune in for the next show. That's probably going to be the last one. I, I'm betting it's going to be the last one in this series on the jlr youtube podcasts and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe i would love to have get more subscription so anyways that's it for tonight you guys take care see ya bye bye Sayonara.